Good morning, New Thought and Spirit community. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And let's say good morning to our online audience that are joining us. And I'll just say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we are so grateful to come together to celebrate this joyous event of being together. I want to start with gratitude by thanking Joseph and Nick for your generous hospitality. And I want to thank all of you, including our Zoom audience, for inviting me back to, to share the message and share the message that we all have. And that's the power of demonstration. It's a humbling experience to be back here after a couple of years because this, like Joseph said, is where I started. And I'm so grateful for just knowing that there are spiritual communities out there that really believe in others and I know that New Thought Spiritual Center is definitely that community and I consider this my home. So thank you for welcoming me back home. I really appreciate your love. So speaking of being back home, I got to realize how grateful and how joyful I am when I am here because we get to be fully present of the beauty of the hands and the beauty of the water, the ocean, the beaches. And that is exciting because it allows us to be present in that present moment. But it also reminded me that it's also practice. This is a place for us to practice our spirituality, to be present. How many of us here were driving in the village this past weekend? <laughs> right? <laughs> and Maybe it was hard for us to be present, right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we had some attachments, a little judgment, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So there's a quote that Eckhart Tolle shares in, in his book, A New Earth. Joy does not come from you, from what you do. It flows from deep within you when you are present. It flows deep within you when you are present. So here's a story of being present. And it's an Instagram story. So let's just imagine it. Imagine this little white puppy being freshly groomed. And it comes out of the groomers. And it goes to sniff the first fresh cut lawn it sees. And it sniffs this lawn in the present moment. It circles around on top of that lawn. It flips on its back and it does that happy dance. You know the happy dance? They rub back and forth. And then it comes back to the owner's feet. It looks up with that glare in the eyes, with the tongue sticking out, and that puffing and puffing of knowing that that puppy gave joy and received joy in that moment. The puppy is no longer white. <laughs> the puppy is now green. But does it really matter? Does it really matter? No, because that puppy was living in the present moment with no attachments, no expectations, no fear. And so the biggest demonstration of joy that we can ever have is the present moment. So that brings it back to us. Are we doing or demonstrating what the puppy is able to do in that moment? Now it's hard for us because we have attachments. We have attachments of the past, of the future, and we have attachments of worrying about what other people think about us, right? And so you're probably thinking, well, I don't have attachments of the past. Well, if you have any kind of judgment, we have some kind of attachment to the past. We have an attachment to an old belief that we carried on from our past, and it surfaces in the present moment as doubt. And sometimes our attachments come differently because we're projecting a small story into the future, and that is the attachment of worry. Or maybe it's the other one that I mentioned, which is we're worried about what our spouse thinks. We're worried about what the neighbor thinks. We're worried about what our children, our coworkers think. So when we're worried about what everybody else thinks, then we are carrying attachments. And when we, when we carry all those attachments, we conceal the fullness and the capacity of what we're intended to be. So why do we carry these attachments? We carry them because somewhere along the line, 
we learned or believed that we were not good enough. And in that consciousness of learning that we're not good enough, we gave from that same mindset. We didn't have enough. So if we withhold any part of our self-expression, we are probably not giving the best version of ourselves. And if we're not giving the best version of ourselves, then it's hard for us to be present, to give joyfully, and to give what we're envisioning in our mind. And so when we're in that mindset of not enoughness, it's hard for us to be present, to be joyful, just like that puppy. And then what happens, the downfall behind that is that we project that story of not enoughness in all of our relationships, our relationships with people, experiences, opportunities, and even money. So think about an area in your life right now where you're withholding a little bit of your self-expression. Which relationship? Is it an opportunity? Is it a personal relationship? Is it being affluent by giving money? Ask yourself, which area do you have a little bit of fear? And then maybe it's that area where we need to be more present, to be more resourceful. So what if, instead of living in that small story, we can live in the much bigger story, the big story that we were meant to realize? What if we can live a bigger story where joy is not dictated to us based on our attachment, but joy is experienced based on our presence. Imagine that. Imagine that. What would it take? What that takes is to collaborate. Collaborate with you, what you already have, what you've been given since the day you were born. All the divine abilities, divine ideas that God is. So if God is our source, love is our source, joy is our source, give that, be that, so that we can envision and manifest from that joyful spirit of being fully present. I know that when we say yes, when we say yes, I am enough, and I have plenty to give. Can we say that together? I, I am, am enough, enough, and I, I have plenty, plenty to give. give. Say that from the spirit of joy. Say that from the spirit of being present. Look around and see everyone in this room. Look online and see everyone around you. If you're able to see the divinity in all of this love and all of this creation, then we're saying, yes. I am enough, and I have plenty to give. So Karen Drucker, in one of her songs, sings a song, God is my source. Joy is my source. And it's everything I need. And when she is sing singing those words, it's not because we're avoiding the misery or the challenges in our life. It's saying that that joy that love, that God is always available. And when we're ready, we can align and collaborate with that power, the power that unifies, the power that ignites and transforms the world. So now let's take a moment to think about this power that resides within you. Think about that joy, that love, and the power it can have when you share it with somebody else, when you share it with the community. That's a lot of power. Are we giving that power fully today? So maybe this idea of knowing that God is our source sounds great in our head. It sounds really good in our minds, but how do we know that in our heart? How do we know that in our heart so that we can put it into practice? So that when we leave here, we can take it into our life and put it into our own experiences and create opportunities of joy, of being present, 
of prosperity. So let's break that down. What is God? God, according to new thoughts, is divine mind. Divine mind, it contains ideas, abilities, and these ideas and abilities are constant, meaning that they don't change. Like, like joy, joy doesn't change. Our collaboration with joy changes. Our connection to joy changes. So how are we collaborating with our divine ideas, divine minds? Are we withholding because we believe that we're not good enough? Or are we giving because we believe from enoughness? Think about it. Think about those areas in your life, your relationships. Which area needs more enoughness? So now let's bring this philosophical idea more into a practical setting. How many of us here and online have ever had inspiration? Raise your hands. <laughs> Insight. Yes. Or that intuitive guidance or knowingness. Raise your hands. Right, now look around. Everybody's had that. Great. So all of these ideas we received in our minds, we received in our consciousness. But what happens to these ideas that we received if we don't give them life? What happens? They disappear, right? When there is no action, when we give no life to these ideas, this inspiration of writing a new book, of you know, seeing your friend, if you don't act upon them, if you don't give them life, they disappear. Well, that goes without saying in every relationship that we have. We may have the greatest intentions, but if we're not giving to that personal relationship, that, that personal relationship will dissolve, will disappear. The same thing with our money. If we are not having a great relationship with our money, that too, can disappear or dissolve. Edwin Gaines, who wrote a book about prosperity, shares that when she doesn't give to where she's spiritually nourished, those expenses that would have been the tithes come from elsewhere, like a tree falling down in her house or you know, um, having to do some car repairs. So the power we have is the power to give them life, to be present. So here's a great example. And this example comes from one of my past experiences being a teacher in the Chicago public schools. I had the privilege to teach children who came from underserved communities. Society would call them the projects. So the children here had a lot of disadvantages. They came from homes where there were bullet holes in their, in their doorways. And so we can just imagine what a hard time they would have behaving in the classroom. So my challenge as a teacher was to, how am I gonna get the children to behave so they can learn? So I thought, well, at the time there was this teaching technique called responsive classroom. And responsive classroom, this, this was before my spiritual days of being a minister, is pretty much affirming what you want to see. And so there was this mason jar that I used similar to the one I brought today. And each time the kids did something positive, I would put a coin in there. And so I would say, Riarcus, I love the way you shared that eraser with Brandy. So I would put a quarter there. I love how quiet this classroom is because we can all think better. And so I kept putting coins in the mason jar. The intention of filling the jar is that they would have a heat party at, by the time it was full. And so the days went on and there was this child that was considered the problem child. However, in my eyes, he was the star child. And so what he did is he would give me these dirty looks each time I put a coin in there. <laughs> and so a couple of days later, he brought his own pocket full of change. And he started to do affirmations. I love the way you shared with me. Thank you for being here. Thank you, teacher. And so his demonstration followed by other demonstrations. The next couple of days, every 
other students came in with their pack of change and they would fill up the jar with affirmations of each other. And so the climate of that classroom, it was like heaven. <laughs> it was like, where did these children come from? Right? And so they were able to cooperate, to collaborate with divine mind, right? Collaborate with all those divine ideas, joy, love, strength, perseverance, caring, compassion. And here's the powerful part of the story is that I never knew where they got the money. And I always wondered because they came from underserved community, right? So I'm like, where are you getting this money? And so one day, Riarchus, the star child, he asked me, teacher, can I have that empty can that's sitting on your desk? And I'm thinking like, why do you need this empty can? He's like, well, that's what I used to get coins for the jar. And I was like, wow, he is collecting cans to get money for the jar. I mean, I, whenever I share that story, it's hard for me not to get emotional because there's so much power in all of us. And we, when we say God is our supply, God is our supply when we're open to it. And in that story, if we can take away something from that story, there was no attachments there. They weren't thinking about the bullet holes in their doorway. They weren't thinking about how they were gonna get that jar filled or how they were gonna eat at home. They weren't thinking about that. They weren't thinking about what their teacher or classmates thought of them if they put quarters in there or coins. They were fully present. They were present in divine mind. And so when we take these tools into our hearts and put them into practice, we can live that bigger story. Say yes, say yes. Yes, I am enough, and I have plenty to give. Can we say that one more time? Yes, yes, yes. I, I am enough, enough, and I have plenty to give. Now say that to your inner child. Say that in a quiet voice. Do you feel that in your heart? Beautiful, use that power to create your day. Our days are like a canvas. It's like an empty jar. Whatever we put in, we shall receive. And it starts with our awareness, our awareness of divine mind. How are we using these ideas? So what I want for us to take away is to reflect on the story. To reflect on the story. How was it possible for this prosperity story to fulfill and manifest. When we think about the word how, we think about a to-do list. Oh, how am I gonna do this? But let's think of it differently, not from the physical realm, let's think of it from the consciousness. That's where our power is, consciousness. How can I manifest this? How can I manifest my relationships? How can I manifest more joy? How were the kids able to manifest in this story? How? I will tell you how. Joy, because there's no attachment to being here with joy. Love, because you actually care about others besides yourself with love. Strength, because you believe that you're able to fill that jar. It's not well, what if this happens? Or what if the jar doesn't fill? Or what if we don't have enough time to fill the jar? It's no, it's how am I gonna fill that jar? How are we gonna fill that jar? How are we gonna fill that jar together? So the how is the consciousness. And it starts with consciousness. In New Thought, we talk about, we create our reality with our thoughts and our feelings. So use your thoughts and feelings to create the reality. That is the how. And then do the action steps. But start with the consciousness so that we know that this is an abundant universe and we are enough.
Saudades. Yes.